Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dave here uh, with our episode four of our Let's Develop series. And in this episode, I want to go ahead and, and basically uh, go over setting up our uh, development environment. So as I went over, uh, we will be using Docker and Docker containers. So I wanted to go through briefly and kind of explain some thoughts here. So with Docker, uh, Docker is basically, it's uh, container based, so it's not like an actual virtual machine. Those are typically used for uh, single application environments. Um, they're not used for the actual development of those applications though. Now, with uh, Docker and Docker containers, we are able to use the NVIDIA GPU through a uh, container called the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. Now, I had some thoughts with uh, VMware Workstation, but the, well, let's go over it. Uh, so the good thing is that they can run, a virtual machine can run anything. Uh, it can run our development apps, and it can also run the production apps. Uh, the good thing with uh, using a virtual machine is that you can easily, easily um, upload your virtual machine to the cloud. However, with a, a VM, you're not able to use the GPU, and that is only available through vSphere. So VMware Workstation, which is what I have, it doesn't have a GPU pass-through. So VMware is completely out. Now, with our local machine, though, uh, right now, you know, I'm running Windows 10 Home. Uh, with that, you can run multiple development apps. You can run your production apps. Uh, I'm not going to run the production apps on the uh, local machine, though. I'm going to use Docker. Now, with Windows 10 Home, on the Docker website or through some uh, previous tutorials that I went through, it did say that you could only use Docker with Windows 10 uh, because of the uh, virtual machine um, platforms that need to be enabled, like uh, Hyper-V. But after doing some research, all we need to do is have the Windows subsystem for Linux uh, feature turned on and installed. And then it has to be upgraded to use uh, version 2, so WSL2. And then we also need to install and enable the virtual machine platform feature as well. And both of those will let us uh, install Docker Desktop. Now, the not really bad thing, but it's kind of meh, is that when you're using your local machine, uh, you need to use uh, Python virtual environments, so that way the actual, the actual application doesn't become bloated with uh, libraries that you know you might install uh, on the machine. So uh, that's pretty much it. Now let's go ahead and I've already installed uh, all of the uh, features and Docker desktop, but I'll go ahead and show you everything that we need to do. And let's uh, go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so now that I went over the uh, different features of Docker as well as using the uh, local system, I went ahead and pulled up our Windows features uh, right here. Now there's two ways you can do this. Uh, you can either use uh, PowerShell or you can just do it, do it through the uh, Windows feature commandlet. So through the commandlet, you just enable uh, the virtual machine platform and then also the Windows subsystem for Linux and you hit OK. Or you can uh, do this through PowerShell. So you can see I have the Microsoft documents pulled up on that for the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Now when we bring up uh, PowerShell and we need to uh, run this as administrator. And once we have that open, we can just copy these, paste, And then uh, you go through and you enable your virtual machine, paste. 
And then after that, you do need to uh, download the uh, Linux kernel update. So you just click on that and you run the uh, MSI file. And once that's run, uh, you do need to restart the machine. And once the uh, machine is restarted, then you go back up to a uh, PowerShell and you use this uh, PowerShell command, WSL space dash dash set dash default dash version two. And then that will give us uh, version two for WSL. Now, once all that is done, then we actually need to install an actual uh, Linux kernel. So I think that's what this is, the, if I'm not mistaken. Like I said, I'm not a programmer, so uh, system stuff. I'm not a system administrator either. I'm more of a hardware person. But uh, I'm more familiar with Ubuntu, so I went ahead and, and downloaded Ubuntu from the uh, Microsoft Store, and I went ahead and installed that as well. So uh, that's pretty much it with um, getting the Linux uh, backbone. Once that's done, uh, you just download Docker, uh, the desktop, Docker desktop. You install that, and you're good to go. So uh, Docker will be for the production stuff. So we don't need to go through, you know, creating a container and everything else. That'll be far into the future. Uh, part of the series. But the other thing that uh, I already have installed, but you may want to get it as well, is uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is really like a lightweight uh, development uh, application. Um, I mean, you can use Notepad, you can use Visual Studio Code, uh, you can use Visual Studio, you can use whatever you want. Um, but I like Visual Studio Code. I mean, it's cool. So you get that from code.visualstudio.com. Uh, you just download it, install it. And then uh, once you get that installed, you do need to uh, download the Python extensions. So you just uh, download those and you're good. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it as far as the uh, applications. Uh, what we'll go ahead and next uh, the next video will actually be to uh, bring up Visual Studio, get that set up to run, uh, get all of our environment variables, and then we'll go ahead and start coding. So see you then.